So if you've got even the slightest bit of interest in stocks or cryptocurrency, then you've probably come across uh, sites like these. And uh, this is the Binance site. And as you can see, it has a kind of live update going on here. And, um, you know, I've got a little bit of Ethereum, so I like to sort of keep an eye on this number here. And as you can see, this on this site, this is actually updating in real time. So you may be wondering, well, how on earth do they do this? And uh, the magic source is WebSockets. So WebSockets are extremely powerful. They enable you to get a live feed from a server. I've used them in the past for multiplayer games. Games like Agario uh, use WebSockets to implement their multiplayer. Um, so I'm gonna show you how you can put a number like this on a web page that updates in real time and it's actually remarkably easy to do. So this is what we're aiming for. So we've got a live feed going on here. And as you can see, it's very similar to the live feed that's going on on the Binance site itself. And you can see as the number goes down, it will turn red. If the number's going up, it will turn green. If it stays the same, then I'm just uh, turning it black. So let's get started. Now you're gonna need Visual Studio Code. So download and install Visual Studio Code. And I have just gone file, open folder, and I've created a folder called stock ticker, and I've just opened that. Now, the first thing we can do is create our index.html file, and we can use Emmet here to scaffold that out. So if I do HTML colon five, then that will scaffold that out. I'm gonna call this stock ticker. And I'm gonna create a H1 header tag here. And I'm gonna give this an ID of stock price. And I'll just put some dashes in here so this is visible to start with. And we will actually grab this element in code and overwrite these dashes here. I'm going to create a script element and set its source to app.js. Now let's create our app.js. So new file app.js. So the first thing we want to do is set up our WebSocket. So WebSockets are actually built into browsers nowadays, so we can use it without having to import anything. And I'm gonna to connect to the Binance stream. So this is at stream.binance.com colon nine four four three forward slash WS and I'm just interested in Ethereum and its Euro price that it's trading at. So I'll do an at trade. And that is enough to set up the WebSocket. And so every time a message arrives on that WebSocket, we can handle it with the on message event. So we subscribe to this on message event and I'm just gonna create an arrow function. And for the moment, let's just console log out the data coming in. So if I save that, 
And then I've actually got quite a handy uh, live server that is actually an extension uh, that we can install. So if you click on extensions and search for live server, as you can see, uh, the top result is this live ser server created by Ritwick Day. And uh, I've already got it installed, but you'll want to click on the install button here. And that will enable you to right click on any HTML files and open them with a web server. So open with live server. So that should open the web page automatically, but if it doesn't, go to 127.0.0.1 colon 5500. And you should see your web page here. And if we have a look at our console, and I've actually got too many E's in there, so let me just fix that uh, error. Uh, control S to save. And if we have a look at our console, you can see that we're getting all these messages coming back from the server. So connecting to a WebSocket and getting live messages coming from the Binance server is as simple as that. Now we want to pull out this P property here because that is uh, the price. So let's go back into our code and do that. So the first thing we want to do is actually turn that JSON string that's coming back into an actual JavaScript object. So we can do that with json.pass and then we pass it the JSON string that is coming back in our data property and then we should s simply be able to do stock object dot p now and that should console log out our price so let's just double check that that works and we'll save that come back here and as you can see now we're getting just the price being sent to our console right let's grab a reference to our stock price element so we can do document dot get element by ID and we called it stock price if you remember if we go back here that's this element here called stock price and then now instead of console logging out we can do stock price element dot in a text is equal to stock object dot p. Let's save that. See what that looks like. And as you can see now we have our stock price updating in real time on our page. Now we can quickly format this to two decimal places by doing pass float because this stock object it, uh, dot p is actually a string so we first of all need to change this to a floating point number to fixed two like that and then we have our number to two decimal places now the last thing we want to do is actually change the color depending on whether the price is going up or down so we need to remember the last price. So let's create a last price and we'll actually set it to null up here. 
and set it to the actual price right at the bottom here and then right here we can do dot style dot color and if you haven't used this before you can simply do something like that and then if we go back you can see that we have set our color to red and you can do green that sets it to green so we need to set this color dependent on whether the current price is greater than the last price or less than the last price but the first thing we can actually check is whether last price is null or not so if the last price is null then we want it to be black otherwise we want to set it to either green or red and we also want it to be black if last price is equal to price i.e. the price hasn't changed then we'll just set it to black so we've handled the initial case where it first goes in and last price is going to be null and that will be black and also when the price and the last price are the same that's also black so that's all handled here otherwise we want to check okay if the price is greater than the last price then we want it to be green otherwise we want it to be red now the other thing we want to do is actually set a price variable up here so let's do that and that is that there and then we can set that to price like so okay so I just forgot to put quotes around black there and that should be happier now so if we do a refresh so as it goes down or stays the same it's black if it goes up it should be green so it's going down it's red back so it's a little bit all over the place but uh but yeah that's about that's essentially it uh, so remarkably quick to get going with websockets and a live feed from binance to your web page